can make a DIY wearable camera using a Raspberry Pi and camera module. This is a great project for capturing timeless photography to make some amazing video. The Raspberry Pi Zero is the perfect size for this project. Use it to capture your daily activities and keep a visual log of your memories. The Raspberry Pi Camera Module version 2 can take 8 megapixel photos and rocks a Sony IMX219 image sensor. You can get the parts to build this project yourself from the link in the description. Follow the tutorial on the Adafruit Learning site for code and assembly instructions. A 3D printed enclosure keeps everything together in a sweet little package. A 500 milliamp LiPo battery provides about 2 hours of use and can be recharged over micro USB. Configure settings like intervals and change the resolution, shutter speed and exposure. I'm also cutting a stiffener portion for the back to hold the buttons in place, along with access holes to allow us to solder to them. All right, so I cut two frames for the tack switches. The top frame holds the switch in place, and the bottom frame, in theory, will uh, allow us to put a diode on. If we want this matrix to work well, we need a diode on every switch, which sounds like a lot of pain to wire, but what I realized we can do is we can put the diode right behind the tack switch across the leads, like, this. But one problem with this is if we put this frame on, I don't know, it's just kind of too deep, I think. I mean, it will definitely eat up the distance of the diode, but I don't think we can get the uh, solder and iron tip in there. So maybe what I should do is um, make another frame. So this could, we could have this as a jig, but then we could have a front frame, which would have the cutout holes for the switches. So when you put them together, it would hold it nicely in place and nicely level. So I could do all the wiring in the back of it like this, you know, just like that and do the matrixing and then not even use this. That would also make it thinner. Time to cut another jig and then hopefully I can get started with the wiring. I need to add a diode onto every switch to make the buttons isolated from each other in the matrix. I'm going to use gray wires for the columns and black wires for the rows. It's time to get wiring. Oh good, the columns are done. And now the rows are done as well. Okay, I finished wiring up the switch matrix. So we have the rows or the sense lines going across and that's going into the diodes. And then we have the columns or the uh, drivers going vertically. So what happens is when you push. So this is my IOT pool. It's an Intex 15 foot by 48 inch deep pool. It's pretty full right now. It's rained this last week, so rain has filled up the pool quite a bit. So hanging in this pool is a DS1820B temperature sensor. It's hooked onto my thermometer. This is a saltwater pool. And so down here is the saltwater system which is downstream of the heater, which is downstream of the pump. So water comes out of the pump, or comes out of the pool, hits the pump and the filter, hits this heater, which is an EcoSmart 11 kilowatt heater, electric heater, got this off Kijiji. Runs on 220 volt, 60 amp circuit. And then the salt water system water is returned to the pool. So the temperature sensor is actually hooked up to some low voltage bell wire that I purchased because the Arduino and the Raspberry Pi aren't really close to the pool. And that's because my Wi-Fi doesn't really extend reliably out to the pool area here. So I kept the Arduino and Raspberry Pi close to the house and 
extended the temperature sensor reach through using just some really cheap bell wire, which is basically doorbell wire. Now this is a combination of a sand filter and pool pump. And it runs on 110 volt and is also connected to the IoT power relay. So this EcoSmart heater actually has a flow control sensor. So it's smart enough to not heat while there's no water flow. And then once it detects water flow, it'll pl the heating elements will kick in. So it's actually a, a spot. Self-driving cars are becoming more and more common. Tesla has its autopilot mode. Google has its self-driving cars, which have logged more than one and a half million miles with very low accident rates. Yet, for some reason, people are still afraid of this technology. Perhaps there's a way we can change all that. Welcome to Formula Pi.